usually with the boy band thing, there's this like preconceived notion that it's like manufactured or put together, and that wasn't the case for us. Um, you know, I met Eric like six years ago, seven years ago. We were friends, and uh, he started putting together a band with Anthony over in California. I flew in from Texas. It was the three of us, and then found Colton on YouTube and Joey through a mutual producer, and we were just in a garage rehearsing from that point. We were Midnight Red. And that's how we formed. Yeah, to be... My mom. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she sent me a Facebook uh, email, and she mentioned a few things that sounded very enticing, and so I just took a leap of faith, and uh, I auditioned, and they put me in the group right on the spot. Did she offer pasta or something? Is she like, there's free pasta? That's probably why. <laughs> <laughs> Food, I'll be there. We will feed you. <laughs> well, our song, Take Me Home, um, Red played it for us, and we loved it. Yeah, he's right like, bat, yeah, yeah, he was just like, would you guys like to record this? And we're like, hell yes. yeah, we would. <laughs> it's a great song. It's like, it feels good. Like, you could listen to like any part of the year, and it feels like you're in the summertime. Like, it's it's a great, like, you have a smile on your face when you're hearing it, and like, when we perform it, like, our fans' faces, like, when they sing it, it's it's amazing. So, it's how you could tell a song is really good. By the end of it you know the song too, like you yeah. get the whole gist of it. It's very anthemic and you know, it's chanty. So uh, what's nice about performing it live is that you really feel engaged with the crowd because they're right there with you, you know, singing just as hard as you are. It's really fun to perform. We were lucky enough to fly to Paris uh, a little bit ago last December and we, um, we recorded about five songs for our album, and of course there's gonna be more than five songs in our album, but that was just a really uh, cool experience for us. You know, the label, uh, one of our labels was like, hey, do you wanna go to Paris? Yes. Uh, so we spent 10 days recording, um, and we did some, we recorded Hell Yeah there. That was one of our first songs we ever like put out. Um, and uh, we've done some recent stuff. We're about to get those tracks back, and we're so excited about that. And it's really cool because we're like having an issue of like, what are our singles going to be? Because we can't choose yeah. between them. And it's a really cool problem to have. And the cool thing about the album, I think it's, it's going to definitely be eclectic. Like, I think, um, a lot of folk stuff. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're crossing yeah. every genre. No, not that it's that intensely eclectic, but um, everything for the most part is pretty feel good as far as like you know the the vibe of the songs. But um, it's actually kind of funky. Yeah. Well, it depends. Like certain songs are, and certain songs don't have like funk to it. But 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 which cool, is nice but because yeah, it's giving not, a little bit of depth. Yeah. What's really fun about recording our album is it's never really done. If that makes sense. Like, yeah. Red has like five studios that he owns. So if he's like, oh, let's do a new song, we literally go in that day and record a new song. So whenever there's a new song, we're just constantly recording. It's not done until it's printed, which is great, meaning that we're going to have the most up to date contemporary album that we possibly can. The more songs, the better. Working with Red One is really awesome. Like, it's super humbling just. I mean, just the first thing, it's, it's very humbling because you're in a room with this guy and it's always surreal, like all the accolades that he has. And he's, he's just like, such a nice, brother. yeah, my brother, like just yeah. such a nice, humble guy, kind of family guy and makes us feel <laughs> like family. And, and he has like taken on the role as, as basically kind of our mentor and he's the executive producer of the album. So it's amazing. And I, I know we've all grown as vocalists too because he's so picky um, as far as when we're recording that he really, is able to, to bring out like um, a great vocal performance out of you when, when you're cutting for a song. The best, yeah. He's such a good singer himself too. Yeah. Like, as a producer, he always like whips out some vocals and we're like, oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he steps up our game for sure. And actually, totally. I produce as well. So for me, like sitting in the studio and watching him and the team do what they do, I learned so much. Yeah, Brian actually, he came into our dressing room um, the very first show, which was at uh, Mandalay Bay in Vegas. You know, all the nerves were up in the air and everybody was basically looking at each other like, okay guys, this is it. <laughs> what is about to what is about wow. to happen? And, you know, he came, knocked on the door, he was like, Hey guys, we were like, Oh even worse, here he is. <laughs> What's he gonna say? And he basically um, you know, calmed us down. He was like, Guys, the main thing you guys have to focus on in your careers is unity with each other. And he said, um, if you guys can stand as a group together, nobody can break you down. And that will take you guys further than you guys can ever even expect. So we've been really you know, thankful for those words and the whole experience of that whole tour. And we've been really you know, incorporating what he said into our daily plans. And we're still here working hard. And we're about to show everybody what's really, really good. Shout out to the Redheads. Redheads. Um, yeah. We're so thankful for them. I mean, we wouldn't be in this position without them. Like, they're, they're what keep us going. They are the number one thing in our lives right now. Like, they are Midnight Red. 
this isn't Midnight Red. The Redheads, that's what Midnight yeah. Red really is. Oof. When, uh, well, first time I heard that girls slept the night, I guess it was at, it was at the Gramercy, uh, Gramercy out in New York. And our Freezing. guitarist at the moment was like, yeah, I walked by and there's girls sleeping there. There's like 20 girls sleeping there. I was like, why? Like, yeah, that was, oh, that's always <laughs> our first snowing, reaction. Like, like <laughs> no, not only that, it's like, why are they waiting for us? It's like, we're just regular yeah, guys, yeah. you know what I mean? And, and it's, it's, that's where it kind of kicks in like, whoa, I, I think like, I think we're kind of making a difference in some people's lives, like that, you know, and they, they genuinely like enjoy our music and you know what we're about. And that's, that's crazy, you know, cause to us, we're just like five guys, you know, we go to rehearsal, we do our thing. We're trying to perfect our craft sort of thing. So. And we definitely feel blessed about it. Like. Yeah. To be able to bring people together in that way through, yeah. through us and through our music. A lot of people are like, you guys are great, but what's been the best experience about knowing Midnight Red is that I've met my new best friend. And that like is like, and there's nothing better than that. I feel yeah, like. it's like yeah. redheads meet each other. Yeah, and they just uh, Take you know road they trips get along. Yeah, yeah, they, they fly crazy. to meet each other across the country to come to a certain show, and you know it's just the dedication.